My ocean is my life. My ocean is also your ocean. When I say my ocean is my life, it reminds me of a quote from Sylvia Earle when she said, everywhere there's life, there's water. And there's nowhere there's life that there isn't water. We need the ocean to survive. We're intricately connected to the ocean. My ocean is your ocean. I grew up in Barbados, a small island in the Caribbean Sea. You can't walk, run, or drive too far on my island before you hit the coastline. And from a very young age, I always saw the coastline as the beginning of the frontier that I wanted to know more about. At six years old, my mom gave me my first mask, snorkel, and fins. From the time I put on that mask and I went into the ocean, my life changed forever. First time I went snorkeling, the noises, the colors, the fish. I was on a safari at home, a few feet from shore. My father was also a fisherman, so he would leave for many days on a boat and he would come out with big shrimp, big fish. Most importantly, the stories. I never forgot the stories and I always knew I wanted to go out there too. I wanted to know what he saw. I wanted to see what he saw. As I got older and I kept snorkeling and later free diving, reefs that I started snorkeling earlier were not looking the same way in just a few years. I think we were doing underwater cleanups back then because every piece of plastic I saw, I already started to take out of the water. I realized that there were stresses happening. I couldn't vocalize it, but I knew something had to be done. When it came to choosing a career, I think it was already chosen at six. My first job was in a water sport shop. My second job was in the marine lab. Being in the dive shop, I got to learn to dive. Being in the marine lab, I got to work with scientists from around the world that would come into Barbados to do field work. I knew I wanted to do both of those things. It, it was just a, a natural fit, being a biologist and also being a paddy instructor. One of my greatest accomplishments was being part of the team that got the marine park in Carla Bay established and open. It's a textbook example, I think, of a marine protected area. We needed to do something. So I focused my studies on coral restoration and later on coral transplantation. Coral restoration implies that a reef has been damaged by a boat or a hurricane and we can go out there and we can fix it. We can now come and seed it with smaller fragments of coral and hopefully if water quality and the fish life is there to help with the grazing, we can start to help the reefs recover. We've worked on this for many years. We specialize in this now. We've saved tens of thousands of cars throughout the region. I'm very cautious because I don't want people to think that we can just build a car reef. You cannot transplant an entire ecosystem. But you can help right some of the wrongs that we have been doing for the last decades. 
We had to get locals to understand this is your ocean, it's not for only visitors, but this is your backyard. If we don't know what's there, we're not going to protect it. And, and that was the main catalyst to me. Imagine if we could expand this around the island. Imagine if we can expand this throughout the region. The children that we're teaching to dive and snorkel right now are so much smarter than we were when we were their age. The ocean is the greatest television set. The ocean is the greatest iPod. I, I just have to get them there. And they take their lessons home to their parents. It is one of the most gratifying parts of my job. My hope for the future is that more people would slow down and smell the ocean. We need to appreciate what's here. Just get in the ocean, put a mask on. If we see what's there, we're going to protect it. My party allows me to influence the next generation. Bless, my name is Andre, and I am a party diver.